Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I transform this image into that image using Photoshop. Hello guys, my name is Philip and let's jump right into Photoshop. Now the first thing I'm always doing is I'm going to copy my background layer by hitting Command and J on the keyboard and as you see back here, now we have a copy of that background layer. So this image was incredibly fast to process because I actually used filters from the Nick collection. But I'm going to show you first how to do it without filters and then if you're happy you can either stop there or continue whatever you want and after I'm going to show you which filters I used to actually get the image I had. So if you want to do it by hand you have different options, okay? So first we're going to have to saturate and we can do it by hitting Command, Shift and U on the keyboard which will just take out the color of this image. Then we're going to increase our contrast by creating a contrast adjustment layer, just clicking here and just increase the contrast all the way to the right side. Bam! So it gives it a little bit of more contrast which is not bad. Now, let's create a curve adjustment layer because what I want is I want the sky to be completely dark but the building still visible. So the way to do that is hit a curves adjustment layer like so and just bring it down to the degree you like. Maybe something like that. Okay. Good, so now I don't want this to show up where the building was. And the building was obviously brighter than the sky was. So what we can do, we can just double click on that layer, which brings up our words, which brings up our blending options. Now, again, I don't want it to be visible where the underlying layer is brighter. So what I have to do, I hold Alt press to my keyboard, separate this little slider here, and when I move that to the left, you'll see that the effect will disappear wherever the building is, because the building was brighter than the background which is the sky in this case. So uh, let's find something we are happy with. Maybe something like uh, something like here would not look bad, I guess. Cool, let's hit okay there. So that's not bad at all. Let's brighten up that building a little bit more. So what we do, we're gonna take another curve adjustments layer and just increase the brightness now to something like that. Now, I brought up, I brightened up everything, which is not really my aim, right? I just wanna brighten up the building a little bit. So let's hide that effect from the whole image and then make sure we just apply to the areas where we actually want it. So what we can do is we can hit Command and I with that uh, curve adjustment layer selected, which will basically hide everything. So you see it's black. So if we get the brush by hitting B on the keyboard and we select white to paint with, then we can just bring the effect back wherever we want it. So hit B, uh, make sure you have white selected and then with an opacity of 100% hitting zero, you're just going to paint through and bring the brightness into the building. Uh, something like that. Cool. That's not bad. So now what I want next is I want to bring some more, of a, well, decrease the brightness actually a little bit because it's a bit, a bit too much, right? So let's get another curve adjustment layer going and decrease the brightness. And I'm just looking down here on this wall. So what I want is I want these, whatever that is, reflections of the light, I guess, uh, to be quite visible, like exactly like it is now. And, but I don't want this effect to be applied to the whole image. So again, similar process. What I will do, I will double click on that layer because I want it not to be visible where the bright areas are. Again, same thing. So let's bring that up a bit. Hold Alt pressed, bring it down. And you see the more I go to the left now, the more the effect will be visible on this, like this wall part. Okay, so I don't want that. Actually, yes, I do want that, of course, because I'm darkening it. <laughs> We're just going to bring it down just a little bit. Okay, so that's far too much. So maybe something like that doesn't look back, uh, bad. Good, and then once we have done that, again, I'm going to invert the button Command and I, which is going to hide that effect, which it didn't in this case because I didn't have it selected. Now it will. And with the brush selected, I'm just going to bring it back here in the area where I want to darken some of the wall areas without actually darkening these light reflections here on the wall. Because remember, we have chosen a blend mode so that this is actually not getting darkened. Cool. So now that we have done that, I actually would like to have this part of the building a little bit brighter as well. And in order to do that, you have guessed it, we're going to use another curve adjustment. I'm just looking at this side of that building, whatever it is right here. And let's do something like that maybe. And again, we're going to hide it, hitting Command and I on the keyboard, get the brush with B, make it maybe a little bit smaller, and just bring the brightness back to this area right here. Okay, good. Let's look at it before and after. Yeah, that brightens up the whole part a little bit. That's not bad at all. Good, so that is one way to do it. And you see there is a bit of light back here or up here. We can easily, easily get rid of that by using another curve adjustment layer and just bringing it down to say something like that. We're going to invert that, hit uh, B for our brush and maybe 40% and with a kind of a large brush we're just going to click a couple of times until it disappears. 
Okay, so that is one way to do it by hand, but there is an even faster way. So if you are one of the people who do not like to basically use pre-prepared filters, then this is the point in the video where you should stop. You should smash that thumbs up button words anyway, and you also should definitely subscribe because I'm uploading weekly. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's important to me. So just, just go ahead and, and subscribe. Good. For those of you who like filters because they are faster and are actually not using them very often, but I like to experiment with them. And if they can do the same job faster, why not? So let's delete everything we have just done to the point where we are back at our background image. I'm going to hit Command and J to duplicate this one. I'll go to Filter. And the first thing we want to do is go to Nick Collection, which is free, by the way, so you can just download it. And then go to Silver Effects Pro. And that's going to take about four seconds to load up. Three, four. Oh, damn it. Oh, it takes super long. There we go. Okay. And here you choose whatever you want. So I chose if I am not 100% mistaken, just this one. So I'll just, you know, without changing anything here, I just hit OK. Now it's going to think for a second, so I'll bring it back once it's done. And we're back, and Photoshop has decided to finish up. Good, so that's the first step. And the second step would be very simple. You just have that layer selected, which you have just created. You go to Filter, and you go to Nick Collection Silver Effects Pro 2 again. And it, this time it will take seven seconds. Three, four, five six, seven, yes, not bad. And this time I'm gonna go for something darker. And something darker could be this. For example, it might as well, it might very well be this. Okay, let's hit okay there. And once more, Photoshop had to think for a while, no problem at all. So that's what we end up with. And you can choose obviously any combination of uh, filters you want, basically. So what I'll go do now is I'm gonna create a layer mask hitting the little tiny Japanese flag down here and that'll create a layer mask. So what I can do with this is, if I invert this layer mask by hitting Command and I on the keyboard, it's gonna hide the entire layer, all right? So everything is invisible. And the same principle as before, when I hit B now on the keyboard to get my brush and I paint with white, I can bring back the effect wherever I feel like. So in this instance, I'm gonna have quite a large brush with an opacity of 100%. You can also go for 80. I might go for 80 actually. And so the new layer is making everything dark. And I want these kind of areas to be kind of dark, right? Because I don't want the sky to be visible at all. So what I'll do, I'll just continue and paint this blackness basically in here. Good. And maybe with an opacity of 30%, we're just going to go once like that, just to make a blend a little bit nicer. And if you hold shift press and you click on that layer mask you can make it disappear if you want to decide okay maybe there are other areas where i would like to have this effect i have on that layer basically so just uh, just first of all learn to speak and then you can hold shift on your keyboard and click on the layer mask it's going to make the layer mask disappear okay so you can back and forth and just to see and maybe i would like to have the effect a little bit visible on that wall here as well so with an opacity of 30 percent i'll just paint over here and maybe have that corner down here a bit darker but you get the idea so that is all you have to do either by hand or with a combination of different filters from free available filter packs basically such as the nick software to create kind of nice black and white images uh, i personally like them always because they're i don't know you don't have to worry about color and every time you don't have to worry about color it's just so much easier not to say that color is not fun, because color actually is a lot of fun, but, you know, that depends on whatever you like. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also, if you haven't already and you're new, don't forget to subscribe. You know, because I'm trying to upload weekly, so you, you don't want to miss out on anything, do you now? Good. And if you have any questions, don't forget to drop me any comment below the in the comment section of either the blog or the video or wherever you feel like. And you can also add me on Twitter at Let's Image if that is what you desire. Good guys, that's going to be it for today. Thank you very much and I'll see you the next time. Bye!